You want to support Roller Mark Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Mark Unfiltered by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, y'all. Uh, next week is the beginning of the school year. Before you send your sons uh, off to participate in organized sports daughters, too, especially when we talk about soccer, I want you to, to read this series of tweets by Laron McClain, a former Pro Bowl fullback in the NFL, who is clearly in distress. He says he says his brain is messed up. He says he can't help it and, uh, and can't get any help. Unfortunately, his story is not an isolated case. As football gets quicker and more physical, the dangers of serious Hit injury increases. Folks, pull up the tweets and we can, uh, do we have them? Okay, uh, so we have some issues with the graphics there, but I mean, you talk about uh, unbelievable when you saw these tweets. I mean, this, I mean, he was literally yelling, yelling uh, on social media saying he needed help. Uh, spent several years in the NFL playing fullback, a position, of course, uh, where uh, they led with their head uh, all of the time. And you also have, of course, um, uh, players who uh, are fighting. Uh, who are fighting um, uh, uh, fighting the NFL. Uh, there was a class action lawsuit that also uh, took place. Uh, and so this is what, uh, this is what uh, he tweeted 12 hours ago. Another sleepless night. Go to my iPad, please. Another sleepless night, another day, another opportunity, though. Stay positive, kings and queens. It's hard, no lie, and I'm scared. Look at me. Talked all that on the field. I was a beast, and now I'm a mess. Man in tears now, but swear I'm going to fight these peeps, keeping this uh, alpha mental. That's what um, uh, he posted. Uh, getting my story out, peeps, just in case something happens to me. I want everyone to know what's going on on daily for 24 hours. The darkest shit ever. It's no joke, peeps. My life is no joke. Uh, man, be in my shoes for a few hours. SMH, some people are sad. SMH, I'm not looking for sympathy. Uh, but uh, some of the other tweets... Um, uh, he tweeted this here, nights like this are the worst. I cannot sleep. My anxiety is up. Real talk. I'm a fucking mess. Like, what's wrong with me, man? Come on, bro. SMH, please just pray for me. God wins. God wins. That was at 326 in the morning uh, on uh, August 26. And, of course, he also was talking about uh, what happened with... Um, uh, what happened with um, um, uh, Andrew, Luck. Uh, Andrew Luck retiring mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and talking about uh, what he was dealing with. Uh, this is what he uh, tweeted uh, at 8.42 a.m. on August 24th. Need to tell my story of how my head is crazy and how football did it. Please, someone help me get out of uh, the NFL. Uh, get this out. The NFL puts paperwork in our faces, and that's it. Yes, it's programs. Fuck all that I need help now. I need a plan. Uh, he said they don't fucking get it, man. And so, again, a number of tweets uh, that he sent out uh, just uh, crying for help. Uh, joining us right now is the noted forensic pathologist and neuropathologist, Dr. Bennett Amalu. Of course, he was the man who diagnosed CTE uh, and the, um, of course, with Mike Webster, the uh, Hall of Famer with the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, who died as well. And Dr. Amalu, when you see these tweets uh, from LaRon McClain, um, what, is, what do you say? What do I say? It's what I have always said. When I said it, uh, people called me all types of names. Knowing what we know today, and this is for every parent out there, knowing what we know today, there is no reason whatsoever why a child should play football in America today. Playing football causes brain damage, permanent brain damage. There is no cure for it. Once the damage is done, it is done. And from studies, just after one season of playing football, your child's brain is irreparably damaged. Just after one season. If you play high school football for one season, your child's brain receives about 1,400 blows, violent blows. For college football is about 1,600 violent blows in just one season. So knowing what we know today, when you play a game like football, not just football, ice hockey, mixed martial arts, wrestling, boxing, rugby, when you play these games, you have a 100%, and I repeat, 100% risk exposure to brain damage. 
So cases like this, I received so many emails from all around the world on daily basis of people like the person we're talking about. So the damage is already done. There is nothing we could do about it. But for children who have not suffered the damage, if your child is playing football today, you need to pull him out. No, there's no reason for any child to play football until that child becomes an adult and makes up his or her own mind if he wants to play a game that would damage his brain. And as African-Americans, I'm, I'm black too. I came from Africa. I'm an American now. The single group that suffers the largest amount of exposure and damage are African-American men. So this has become a civil rights issue of our time. Many young black boys are damaging their brains. When you play this game, you suffer from major depression. You have almost a 400 to 600% increased risk of committing suicide. You lose your intelligence. You're less likely to attain high levels of uh, education. You're less likely to get a job that requires complex thinking. You're less likely to become successful in life. You're more likely to become an alcoholic. You're more likely to abuse drugs. You're more likely to engage in impulsive behavior. You're more likely to engage in criminal behavior. This is very well established. In 1957, the American Academy of Pediatrics said that no child under the age of 12 should be playing football in America. This is in 1957, 11 years before I was born. So what is going on? I, I had a, a public high school about five miles away from my house. Every Friday night, there are so many cars in the parking lot. So one day I was driving home, I pulled over to see what was going on. I walked in, they were playing football. Over 95% of the students, of the boys on the field were blacks. Meanwhile, a private high school that is about 10 miles away from me, they don't have any football program. So doc, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you a question. Um, so when you say, so what should, from your point of view, if someone wants to play football, what should be the age they should start? There's, there is no age to start playing football. It's, it's inherently dangerous. Just like there is no age where you should slam your head on the wall. But because we live in a free society, once you become an adult, 18, you're free to do whatever you want to do. You mm -hmm. have every right to exercise your freedom and liberty. If you want to engage in um, deep sea diving, that is your prerogative. I will support you. If you want to engage in um, skydiving, wonderful for you. But not children. Children have not reached the age of consent to make up their minds, to even understand the intricacies of what they are doing. And so no child should play these games. Children should engage in brain-friendly sports. Non-contact, swimming, volleyball, basketball, baseball, so many, so many games. However, these non-contact sports should still be played safely because there is still um, a very minor risk of accidental injury. The NFL, the NFL fought you aggressively, uh, and now they, uh, now they are, you know, they say they're making great strides. Do you believe that the NFL has done enough? Uh, and what do you think about uh, what's happening on the college and high school level as well? You know, well, I've traveled all around the world, and what I tell parents is, let us not make this about the NFL. The NFL is a corporation that is there to make money, and they have every right to make money. The NFL is a legitimate corporation, just like every other legitimate corporation, Apple, Google, Microsoft, they sell a product, which is football, entertainment, sports entertainment. They want to make money. The NFL is not there to take care of your child. That is not what they're in business for. So let's not make this about the NFL. 
Let us make this about the dignity and integrity of each and every life. My middle African name is Ifa Kando. It means life is the greatest gift of all. The greatest gift a parent could have is the gift of the life of your child. Parents should make up your minds. Which is more important to you, the life of your child, or very transient, uh, 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 um, ectatic, <laughs> the times, days, periods, on, on a weekend, uh, several days a week. I wouldn't let my son play, and I wouldn't ask someone else's son to play. And this is not just my personal opinion. This is the position of science. Mm -hmm. Like people, this is not Bennett or Marlowe's opinion or perspective. No, this is the truth. This is the fact of science. But what if you've noticed, as, as, as amplified by our politics today, as a society, we are beginning to, 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 to deny and reject the truth for what it stands for. There is only one truth, but the truth frequently is inconvenient and many times painful. So as a society, what we're beginning to do is to develop alternative truths that will serve our convenience. Mm -hmm. That is a road to darkness. Dark Embrace the truth, respect, recognize the truth for what it is. And the truth in this is, there is no reason whatsoever a child, knowing what we know today, I'm not talking about in 1970s, the players who have played and suffered brain damage is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Medicine cannot reverse the damage, that's a fact. But what about the future? What about the future? What about children whose brains have not been damaged? Mm -hmm. And as a physician, as a physician, I'm mandated, I'm required to tell the truth. To tell the truth to parents, to children. And as a Christian, <laughs> as a Christian, I'm mean, even more required. Mm -hmm. Okay? Dr. The B truth sets you free. The truth is liberating. So what we need, we need a radical change in our propositional value in our value judgment system. Yep. Many parents will tell me, oh, my son is going to get a scholarship. My son will get, get into the NFL. Less than 0.03% of football players make it to the NFL. And parents that believe that the NFL will make my son wealthy, that is a big lie. Football players are the lowest paid athletes. I don't know if people know that. The average salary, uh, uh, an analysis I did a couple, years, a couple of years ago, is about $1 million. The span, professional span of a football player's uh, career is about three to five years. So you damage your brain for only three to five million dollars. And then when you're taxed, the money that gets into your pocket is about three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars and then when you retire after five years, your brain is damaged, you cannot sustain yourself economically. Is it really worth it? Like I said to high school students, who is more likely to live in a multi-million dollar home at the age of 60? A doctor or a lawyer or a football player? Of course, the answer is very obvious. If you're a lawyer or a doctor, you're more likely to live in a $1 million home at the age of 60 than a retired football player. That's a great point, Dr. Malo. Uh, and it is certainly, uh, again, when we look at uh, these stories, uh, uh, it causes uh, great concern. Uh, Dr. Ben Amalu, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good our companion here, Jason. This is, uh, you know, look, um, I don't have kids. I guarantee you if I did, they're not playing football. Yeah, I agree. Um, <clears throat> I have a son, and I, you know, I played football in, in high school, uh, and I have a son who's five, and honestly, he's going to play baseball. You know, he's going to play some of the sports that uh, Dr. Amalu uh, alluded to. Uh, it's just not worth it. Um, I think there was a sports science. I really enjoy those sports science things that they yep. do on, on ESPN, and they did one on DeMarcus Ware, mm -hmm. and they said basically if he hits you from with like a five-yard running start, it's literally like a truck hitting you. 
and it will concuss you. You know, uh, and a you know truck hitting you, you could die depending on your preparation for it. So that to me says, and uh, you know, I love that Dr. Amalu pointed out the economic point, mm -hmm. which is they're the lowest paid athletes. You're not going to get a Bryce Harper or some of these, you know, the other salaries that you would get in baseball or in other sports. Um, to me, again, this is also an economic and a cultural thing where African-American youth are, are attracted uh, and pushed towards football rather than other sports. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that now we are starting to see that this is, you know, the risk is not worth the reward at all. Uh, Melik, when you see these tweets, when you see, I mean, homeboy is just oh. uh, McLean crying out for help. Yeah, that, that's, that's heartbreaking. And, you know, as Jason said, you know, this is really cultural. And it's really, a, and I don't know if any other um, con country has football. There's some, but it's, it's not growing. to the yeah. extent that we have but, it. But it's something that, you know, it's a part of, a, you know, an American tradition. And so American. what you are seeing, um, you're seeing a lot of uh, parents choosing not to allow their um, kids to play. And so definitely support anything like that. Um, I like what, you know, the attention that has actually been drawn to the concussion issue. That, you know, and a lot of football fans like me, you know, back in the day would get upset you know, if one of our players was hit, and it's like, well, get up! You know, it's like, yeah. you, you, you were just hit, you know, get up! But now that we're really starting to look at the effects of that, I think it's a great thing, and I hope that even in our, you know, communities like ours, you know, that's why it's important. I love what's happening at Howard um, with the, golf, you know, the, um, mm -hmm. Stephen, Cur Stephen Curry, um, what he's doing with golfing, because the more that we introduce our, we excel in everything once we're in it. So whether it's swimming, whether it's baseball, basketball, anything. And so the more those type of sports are introduced in our community. Yeah, accessible, yeah. Yep, the Kelly. better it will be. Uh, just to piggyback off of what uh, Malik was saying, I, I'm a little conflicted about this because while I agree with the doctor, at the same time, this has to deal with access. A lot of schools don't have baseball programs. A lot of schools don't have right. golfing programs mm -hmm. or s swimming programs, let alone a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. So all you have at these uh, lower, uh, what's the word? elementary uh, level of education, these institutions, elementary school, middle school, high school, is a football field. It's not a question they don't have it. Bottom line is football's revenue generating sport. No, and I so, would... And so it is, and the reality is, out of all those sports you mentioned, football actually has more players. So the problem is you have 30 or 40 or 50 people on 60, 70 on a football team where, hell, that, that might end up being five sports combined. The reality in America is that football is a revenue generating sport. And I agree it's with It's money. I, I mean, it's just flat out. You're absolutely it's, it's right that money. it's money, but I also understand the fact that there are schools out there that don't have other programs. No, 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 no. They don't have other programs because football is a revenue generating sport. Right, so, so they so, invest so, in the football and not into the other programs. No, that no, they no, no, no. Have. It's not that they invest in, in the football program. The football, this, this nation, this day, football now is a religion. Right. Okay. Football, football now owns Sunday. Right. Yeah. Okay. And right next started. to right next to church. So what has happened is it is so deeply embedded. The NFL is a ten billion dollar a year corporation. They make more money than all of the other professional sports, including the NBA. You look at it on the college level. You take yeah. the Big East. The Big East became the Big East because of basketball. Mm -hmm. Georgetown, uh, Syracuse, Villanova, Connecticut. When football money came in, it completely decimated the conference. Why? Because you cannot compete with, uh, with football money. And so the problem in America with football is money. And the people, and it is such, it is so massive. Pro, college, high school, You've got high school stadiums in this country, mm -hmm. several in Texas, with 60 and 70 million dollar <laughs> high school stadiums. So the problem in this country are those who are profiting from football who are not concerned at all about the health piece. But I'm not necessarily talking about just high school. There are peewee football teams out there. Yes, money. I, 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 I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say, I understand your point about access. But what I'm saying is, what they're doing is, their deal is, this is about money. And so they're making money in Pee Wee. They're making money 
in elementary school and middle school. They're I mean, they're making gobs of money, and you wouldn't think so, but that's what's driving this deal. And you have people out there who are saying, long as that money train is going, all right, your head might hurt. Okay, we could teach you how to tackle a different way. But that's what's going on here. And in, in, in that movie, Concussion, what the doctor said is, and the problem is they're seeing the, the shift now. In Concussion, that was that scene where he said, if just 10% of parents pull their kids from youth football, the whole system collapses. Mm. Because it's about money. And that's what the NFL is. That's what college football is. Yeah. That's where high school football is. And that's why they fought Amalu like crazy. Yeah. So they're not trying to put the money to create those other sports, to create the alternatives, because folks are saying, we're getting paid with football. And that's, and that's what's driving. It's the profit of football. And that's what's scary. Uh, real quick, real yeah, quick. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add to that. Uh, if you've been, if you visited places like the University of Alabama recently. Roll Tide. All new buildings. Roll Tide. I mean, oh, it's, it it's the school. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Oh, the, arm, the arms race, How? the arms race in college football is ridiculous. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, the amount of money being put into, and first of all, let's just be clear, only a handful of athletic departments actually make money. Oh, absolutely. That, that's the other thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it, is, it is so, it is so, and I'm telling you, what is happening is, but see, let, we, we also got to go beyond this. What, what is the other hugely sport that's popular among kids? Soccer. They're now seeing massive brain injuries mm. because Balls. You well, can, that was my, uh, hit with your head. So it's, what, it's, well, that's what I wanted to get at because I was a soccer player up until 13, 14 years old, and I don't know whether I got concussed much because of my position. I didn't have to deal with, you know, that much contact. But at the same time, any sport that requires you to move at that speed or be that agile or have any type of ball coming to your face. Baseball has concussions. There are people who suffer from CTE from baseball and CTE from yeah. soccer. But, Not but at the, the same rate. Yeah, the, Not this, at the same yeah, rate. It's I, repetitive. I, right. I get that. It's like so, so in boxing, for example, they'll tell, anybody will tell you it's better to get knocked out with one punch than to be, you know, Repeatedly knocked hit. out on mm -hmm. your feet. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is the, it's the repetition, play after play after play. These people are running into each other. And some places and have actually banned uh, using your head in soccer. Right. Yeah. So, I again, I understand the predicament. I think we need to come to a conclusion as to exactly are children going to be allowed to play sports at all? Because there are areas where sometimes that sport is the child's ticket out of whatever predicament they're in. But that, but that, but that's the that's problem. problem. That but see, no, but no, no, but no, no, but see, that's, and that's what they prey on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's what they prey on uh, when, when, if, and I, if sports is the ticket out for maybe one kid. Right. Maybe one. I mean, if, if you take, if you take a neighborhood, you take a traditional neighborhood, maybe one kid mm -hmm. in the entire neighborhood. And that person becomes Over legend. the course of 22 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the legend. Will become a pro. Yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. That's how small it is. And so I, 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 that argument can't work. And the problem is it is, it is, it is what's driving, I think, uh, so much of this. But what you have, again, though, what you have, folks, is they don't want the, 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 uh, the assembly line to end. Right. That's what they don't want because it's money and it's billions and billions and billions of dollars that are at stake and that's what's going on here. And so All right, folks, back to our Roll Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, you heard me talk a lot about MarijuanaStock.org. Why? Because I want to keep you informed of investment opportunities that make sense. We've all watched the growth of the cannabis industry. A recent report by New Frontier Data estimates the global cannabis market at over $340 billion. We know that marijuana legalization is sweeping the country state by state. We also know that marijuana has a good cousin, the hemp plant, with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Now, until recently, hemp farming was practically legal in the U.S. and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, the 2018 Farm Bill changed all of that, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S., creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. 
folks, they need land to grow all of the plants, and that's where our good friends at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants. That's right. They are hemp CBD landlords. You can get in on the action. My friends at 420 Real Estate decided to do something special for the Roland Martin Unfiltered family. Originally, the minimum investment level was 500 bucks. Right now, you can invest in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as $200. That's right. 200 bucks up to $10,000. So you have a growing industry where you can get in for as little as $200. To invest, go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org. Get in the game and you can get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered Fit.